Hey, nursing students, this is Jessica. Um, I'm on my second year, which is awesome, and we are going back over the respiratory system, and we're covering some drugs. So I'm making this video not only to help me study for my test coming up, but also um, just kind of give you guys some fun ways that I have learned how to remember these drugs so that when you're taking your test, you're going to rock it. Okay, so we're going to talk mostly about um, drugs and medications for airflow disorders. The first one is your beta-2 adrenergic agonists. I'm going to call them the B2s today because that's a lot less to say. <laughs> so your B2s, um, they pretty much, the main drug uh, that's a B2 is albuterol. And another name for albuterol is Ventolin or Proventil. So a lot of times you might get tripped up if you're looking at a question and it's saying Ventolin and you're not sure what to do. It's the same as albuterol and it's a B2. Um, there are a couple other versions of it. Terbutaline, um, Sumeterol or Formeterol, the Terols, albuterol, those are kind of things to trigger you that it's a B2. Um, the action of the B2s, they promote bronchodilation, they help your bronchospasms, so the asthma attacks, the spasms that are happening, um, it's going to calm them down, dilate, calm, and get you chilled out so you can start being able to breathe. Now there are side effects with this. I myself have had um, bouts of asthma and bronchitis, and I have taken albuterol inhalers. For me, um, I have quite intense reactions. You're pretty much going to guarantee that uh, your patient's going to experience tremors. So you're going to feel like you're all shaky and anxious, really anxious. Uh, sometimes you might feel like you're going to pass out. Uh, definitely heart palpitations and tachycardia. Your heart will be racing and you definitely just don't feel good. Um, angina is a side effect from this as well. So you need to be really careful if your patient has um, cardiac like vascular disease, heart disease, anything like that, you want to be careful giving this to them because it can cause vasospasms and cause some problems. So really, um, administration, you just need to give as ordered. Usually you take a puff, you wait a few minutes, you take another puff, um, you just need to follow whatever the doctor does there. Uh, you definitely do not want to use this if they have um, heart conditions. and be very um, concerned to be precautious if they have diabetes mellitus because one problem that you can have with uh, the albuterol, the B2s, is that um, the drugs that they could be taking to help lower their high blood sugar could not be working so you're, they would have to take more medication and they could possibly have higher blood sugar levels from that. Okay, so that's your B2s. Albuterol, now they're rapid acting, therefore like asthma attacks or things right away to help solve. It's a rescue inhaler. It's not meant for long-term prevention. It's more to dilate and relieve the bronchospasms. Okay, so the next drug we can talk about is your inhaled anticholinergic. And anticholinergic basically dries you up. So depending on uh, what area it's hitting, it's going to dry things up. Um, the drug name for the anticholinergic, that's going to be your ipatropium or tiotropium. Another word is Breva or Atrovent. I think your tropiums. Anticholinergic. Anti <laughs> I forget how I did this. Oh, yeah, antitropiums. Um, these basically are bronchodilators and they work kind of the same as B2s as far as dilating but they are not good for a rescue inhaler, an asthma attack, things like that because they take quite a while to become um, effective. So they're more used for prevention, prevention, dilate, help the person be able to breathe better and function. Um, I've taken these a well. <laughs> I've taken a lot of these meds. Um, Infects, you know, with the anticholinergic, I said it's going to dry you out. So just think about what it's going to do to your patient. They're going to have a dry mouth. They could have a hoarse voice. Um, and definitely you want to check and make sure they're peeing because it's going to cause urinary retention as well. Um, you want to make sure you're giving your patient plenty of water and hard candy, depending on what the doctor's ordered. And watch their urine patterns, especially in older adults who don't urinate as often. You want to make sure they're not retaining. Um, you're going to administer either as inhaler or nebulizer. Follow the instructions the doctor's given you. Um, if you're giving any other inhalers, you want to wait like five minutes in between. Um, it tends to taste gross, so you definitely want to rinse your mouth after using it. And again, this is not a rescue drug because it takes quite a while to become effective. So um, 
let's see what else I want to cover on that. So you might want to be precautious in using this in patients with like prostatic hypertrophy, bladder neck obstructions, things like that because um, if they already have problems with their urinary system and you're giving them something to dry them out, they will probably have more problems and end up retaining urine. Also, anybody who's allergic to soy lecithin, soybean, or peanuts, if you're allergic to those, uh, you can have problems as well with this medication. Um, it basically bronchodilates, like I said before. Um, it helps with long-term manage of, management of chronic asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema. Okay, scratch that. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong slide. Methylxanthines are the long-term management of chronic asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema. So here is where it gets a little weird. Your methylxanthines, your prototype drug, is theophylline. Now, these aren't really used very often, um, but I think Theo is doing meth, and I use meth scenarios and pot scenarios all the time. But if you think Theo, theophylline, is doing meth, that will help you remember that a methylxanthine is theophylline. They, what does meth do? Like when you take it, you're kind of like chill. So it's going to relax the smooth muscles and like the bronchi and also the blood vessels in your lungs. So everything's going to kind of chill and relax. Um... You all want to watch and make sure that they're not getting too much meth, too much methylxanthines, because if it goes above the therapeutic level, they can have restlessness and insomnia, nausea, vomiting, vomiting and diarrhea. Now, if they get toxic, if their blood level gets toxic with the meth, uh, seizures and dysrhythmia, so you really want to um, watch. You maybe want to have some anticonvulsants um, on hand just in case. You want to definitely monitor for seizures and dysrhythmias. Um, if they go, that's why your heart rate and rhythm, big time, you're going to be monitoring that. Um, usually it's given orally and it's based on their height and weight and other factors like with metabolism. Um, if the dose is missed, do not double the next dose. Just take it as ordered. And again, reduce or eliminate caffeine because it can cause kind of a stimulant effect and you really don't want to have that. Um, if you're having, if your patient's having any signs of like, heart palpitations, dysrhythmia, seizures, you want to stop the medication. Um, you definitely would use it in precaution if they have heart disease, liver problems, and diabetes. Um, increased risk of toxicity. If they're taking um, cimetidine or tagamet um, or caffeine, it increases. That's why no caffeine. It will increase the risk of toxicity. And... That is it on the methylxanthine. So, who is taking meth? That's Theo, right? So, methylxanthine is theophylline, and it causes dilation, and it causes the heart or the lung um, vessels to kind of relax, dilate, smooth, chill out. It's um, definitely the methylxanthines aren't used very often, but it's more of kind of like a long-term thing. Okay, now we got our glucocorticoids. Um, they're for long and short term of treatment of like chronic asthma. So if you're inhaling the glucocorticoid, that would be like the QVAR or the beclomethazone is another way of knowing it. The zones, the S-O-N-E is your glucocorticoids. Your oral would be your prednisone and nasal would be the beclomethazone as well. Um, I have been on the prednisone and also the beclomethazone. I had um, pretty strong issues with both of them. Okay, so what do they mostly do, glucocorticoids? Well, they suppress inflammation. So when the person's lungs are inflamed and they're having a lot of trouble trying to breathe, this will kind of help over a longer period of time, calm things down, um, kind of block histamine and some other things that are causing the inflammation and decrease the edema in the airways. Um, inhaled, if with the inhaled, they can get thrush, hoarseness, or difficulty speaking. So if your patient's on QVAR, beclomethazone, you want them to be rinsing their mouth out because they can get thrush. The oral, like the prednisone, um, it can cause hyperglycemia. Like when I was on it, the doses were a little bit too high. It took us a while to figure it out. So I gained about 20 pounds in two days. I had to pee all the time. I had to eat. I was hungry all the time. 
sub got severely angry out of nowhere, but my house was clean. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> there was a lot of side effects. So you really need to be watching your patient to make sure um, that they're, you know, not having too many adverse effects. Um, the nasal version of the beclomethazone, that can really dry out their mucous membranes, cause a nosebleed, sore throat, headaches. So you want to watch for that as well. So for the inhaled, you want to use a spacer for that QVAR or the beclomethazone because that will help really uh, get it kind of past the tongue and the teeth and really get it deep into the lungs where it's supposed to be. Um, prednisone oral, um, they should probably uh, take it with food or meals because it can irritate the stomach. And with the prednisone, they can't just stop it. Um, it definitely needs to be tapered down because it, it affects a lot of um, things in the body. Uh, if they're having, if your patient's having pain, it's recommended um, that they do like ac acetaminophen possibly if they need that. Um, with the prednisone, the glucocorticoids, you need to monitor blood glucose levels because of the hyper, for hyperglycemia. So because they are so hungry, the polyphagia, they're wanting to eat all the time, um, their blood glucose, glucose levels could be rising. You want to watch for signs of infection, look for like sodium retention, um, and then watch electrolytes because with that's usually pretty severe weight gain and it can cause edema and other things you want to watch closely. All right, so... And remember, with these glucocorticoids, they are not for an acute attack. They're more long-term to help with the infl inflammation and dilate. Um, what else do I want to tell you about that? Okay. So we talked about using a spacer. Um, sorry, pardon me, for your patient education on the inhaled you want to educate them on um, using a spacer and how to do it appropriately and also rinsing their mouth out um, and gargle to prevent that thrush so that they don't get it because it's very easy to catch it. Um, for the prednisone, uh, make sure that they understand that the dose has to be tapered to not stop it abruptly. And if they're on prednisone, they may want to increase the intake of calcium and vitamin D if they're on it um, because it will get the absorption is not as good. And they need to report to their doctor weight gain, edema, weakness, and if they have polyphagia, polydipsia, or polyuria, which are pretty common signs. Um, for the nasal, for patient instructions, you could educate them. They could use a humidifier if it gets so dry and painful, if they're having sore throat, bloody nose. Um, they can suck on candy or take over-the-counter, like, non-NSAIDs. You don't want NSAIDs with that. Um... And that is that on the glucocorticoids. Hey, we're almost done. Hang in there with me. Okay, so then there's the mast cell stabilizers. Those are long-term treatment for allergy-related asthma um, and also exercise-induced asthma or bronchospasms. And a lot of times it's just used for allergy. So if you remember your mast cells, they release histamine, which causes the allergic or the inflammatory response. So your mast cell stabilizers, the prototype drug is your chromalin or Intol. The mast cell, mast C, the cell starts with a C, so mast chromalin is kind of how I remember it. It's hard, it's kind of hard, but mast chromalin or your mast Intol, um, those basically are suppressing the inflammation. They're a lot like the, the corticosteroids that we just talked about. Um, therefore, allergic reaction, you want to watch for that. You, they may get a dry mouth and a headache from it. Um, it doesn't taste very good, so they may want to be rinsing their mouth out when they're done. I'm going next to my slide just to make sure I'm covering everything. Okay, so one big thing, it's to help prevent exercise-induced bronchospasms or asthma attacks. Um, it's, not to re it's not there to relieve an asthma attack. It's more pre for prevention. So with education for your patient, you want to let them know, hey, you need to use this inhaler 15 minutes before exercising to prevent an attack. And it's not for once they've had an attack. Once they're in the middle of an attack, they need to be back to that B2 or that albuterol. Um, after they do inhale the medication, they can gargle, drink sips of water, suck on candy as needed. Um, if they do get that headache that is sometimes common, they can use over-the-counter pain meds for that. Um, they, you need to be kind of precautious if they have liver or kidney disease if they're taking this. And there's no known interactions 
with that. So those are the main drugs I think I really wanted to cover today, um, the ones that I feel like are the most important. So hopefully this helps you. B2s, albuterol for your big attack. The other name for albuterol is Ventolin or Proventil. Um, your mast cell stabilizers will kind of block like the histamine, so it kind of helps calm things down. And hopefully you remember the rest of it. Thanks.